Hi, uh, this is a little video just to show how um, ghs.com can be used to prepare for a certain opponent, uh, which is a very useful uh, tool that every competitive chess player needs to have. It's going to be a bit of a longer video this as preparing for an opponent. I'm going to show you how I'm going to use it to prepare for an opponent I'm playing today. Uh, one of the best players from India, uh, Vidit. So we're going to do that. Uh, a little pop-up of a boat there. <laughs> I'd love to get a boat one day, you never know. Uh, come on, G-Chess, sell. So the first thing to do is um, to look at his games um, under the top game section. So I want to see what he plays. And uh, to do that, we're going to have to use the filter bar and enter his name into here. So I'm going to just put his name in and it should automatically find his name, which is a very useful tool. And um, we can do it with white or black. Uh, and I'm going to have white and the black pieces. So I'm going to prepare for him uh, to start with where he has, let's say, the black pieces. So let's just have a look. So these are going to be all the games where I have white. And I'm just going to press go uh, and we're going to see uh, some of the games that he has in the position, which makes sense here. And you can see he's played some pretty handy people here, all, all these players here. Now, a very quick cheat method that we thought would be very useful uh, is this little button here. And if you just flick that on, uh, you will see his scores against certain openings. So what openings actually score best uh, against it. Uh, and you're looking for the big numbers with white. And you can see here that he's played against the English 40 times. And white has won 22% of the time. Obviously, Vidit's a great player, so he's always going to have more black wins. But out of all the openings, the English is scoring a little bit better. So I'm going to start by just having a look at that move, C4. And we're going to see, again, this is a very quick and useful way to see what you're likely to get, what he normally plays against this. And we can see that in most cases, he plays the symmetrical which is interesting. So if I wanted to play a positional match against him, then we could go into this variation, which I might be tempted to do. Uh, he also plays e5. So these two moves, the two traditional ways of playing are the most likely. So let's just, again, ha have a look a little bit more deeper at c5. And he's had 21 games with knight to f3. That's not generally the way I play the position, but let's see if things transpose and I'm just going to go a little bit deeper bishop g2 bishop g7 knight c3 knight c6 and then again this is exactly what I play and there's a number of moves here I generally play e4 here which he hasn't faced I could of course now if I want to have a look at e4 click on the other tabs so I could go to the encyclopedia bit and have a look what I recommend there or, or some of the other tabs but uh, in this position a move which I, I do find very interesting is this idea of going a3 and b4. So let's just see what he does against that. So rook b1, knight to f6, pawn a3, castles, pawn to b4, and now he captures on b4 and goes a6. And you can see that white's won one game in this, so he's got he's lost every game in this. d4 pawn to d6. This looks like quite a decent position for white. Knight f3, bishop f5, rook b2. Okay, and this position may be something I'm not going to do, to be honest. Um, okay, so just I'm just getting an idea at the moment uh, about what he does, and I'm going to go back now to the first move. So there's not much I can get in the English. I mean, I will just have one more look at... Uh, this pawn, well, pawn, see what he does against pawn to e5, so knight c3. What setup does he go for here? Uh, does he go for d5? He plays pawn to d5 here. Okay, that's quite interesting. So the English opening is looking like an idea I can play. But the other move I, I, I very often play is, um, oh, this is Vidit uh, with the white pieces. Okay, so let me just flip that back to uh, the black pieces and we'll do it again because we're preparing with white 
And I'm just going to look at D4 now. Uh, we'll reset the board. Uh, we don't want to confuse the system. And what does he normally do here? Okay, so well, nearly always he plays knight to f6. This is interesting. Now c4 is the main move. After knight f3, he generally goes d5, pawn c4, pawn e6, knight c3, and he plays this move a lot. Okay, interesting. And bishop g5, h6, and I think there was a game where bishop d2 was played here, which is, is something I, I, I may well try. And what other moves can you play? Well, after c4, he goes he goes g6 a fair few times. And I remember him doing the Grunfeld. Okay, that's interesting. What else can he play? Bishop g5, what's his answer here? Okay, he plays very soddly with d5. Right, okay. Knight c3, pawn c6, queen d3. Is this something that could potentially confuse him? Uh, that's an interesting position actually it looks like to me but okay he's, he's playing what it seems to be quite a lot of the theoretical moves there um, which I won't go for um, and what else am I thinking of doing if I do the London system thing is the London system now these top players they know it so well that it's something that is absolutely fine but I don't feel like playing the London system today, to be honest. So I'm going to move that one. And now after the normal move, knight to f3, which I play, he's going to go d5. Okay. Now bishop g5, I had this recently. This is interesting. Knight c3. And now he goes bishop b4. So I'm trying to think of ways where I can avoid his favorite bishop b4 move here. This is something I'm, I'm just trying to work out if there's a way I can do that, but it doesn't seem like I can do it easily. So very likely to get knight c3 here, and now he does very much like playing bishop to this square. So I don't know a lot about the Rogozin, so I'm now thinking with the white pieces, what can I do? And I've just looked, I, I play a lot of different openings now. So I can, I can think about the English, if I want to be more positional, or, or this position here, according to the stats is a very likely position that I'm going to get in my blitz match with the white pieces so I need to do a bit more work on this position which I'm going to use the other resources in GHS or I'm going to um, go for the English and do that but just before I do that the, the, the last option which I can play is e4 um, so my main moves are e4 d4 and, and, and c4 so I just want to see what it does uh, generally against so we'll just reset the board here against e4 by the way i could save these games as i go on just by pressing the save button here but uh i should better memorize them and and keep them in mind what what we're likely to get so that's what i'm going to do okay so he plays a lot of moves here c5 e5 and uh, after this i i mean okay so i played bishop c4 he's very likely to go bishop c5 and i've got this d5 line let's see if he's ever had that so castles, knight to a six, and this is where I play the gambit d4. And because I haven't played the move e4 or move one as much as the other options, I don't want to give myself too much to learn. Um, I, uh, oh, he has had b4. Okay, he's had the wing gambit. Now this is something that I, I've, I've played against him. If you want to look at who what the game was, you can just click the list thing here and you can see you bring back the game so you can see who the opponent is and more you can get more details you know because obviously if he's playing someone very strong that means the quality of the game's going to be more interesting than if he's playing a, a much lower rated player but let's have a look just what he does against this so a3 d5 okay so takes queen takes and knight to f3 and he plays the main line now this line i, I quite like playing this line as white so this is something i could certainly try out uh, as well depending how the match goes so i'm just uh again now c4 is one of the moves in my grandmaster gambits and again you can click here and you can see um all the theory here so if you want to have a look at the theory you just can do this and you can save it into your database so this would be one way you can do it you just load up the pgm and you press save here and you can save this work so you can basically get a database 
and save all your work against one opponent and then you can just go through that to remind yourself but I'm not going to do that again because uh, you know I, I can't be bothered <laughs> so but it's very useful so you can go straight into the theory here and by the way we've got this new way of showing the text which I think is very smart uh, very nice you can follow the Grandmaster commentary this is commentary by me and Richard Palliser um, and we might come back to that so let's just have a look c4 very interesting move he went queen e6 main move and now d4 is is my recommended way of playing uh, let's see if this is actually uh, in the PGN and we have c4 queen e6 so it's not the main move that I give here I give pawn takes pawn as the main move so I'm already getting I'm just basically getting thoughts in my head about how I'm going to play with white potential weaknesses in in Vidic's repertoire potential surprises that I can play against him um, potential um, sort of just just in my mind what strategy I want to adopt against this incredibly strong player in the opening very important now the last thing that's just come to my mind is okay I'm just getting together these thoughts is what does he do against the King's Gambit so I'm actually quite happy if he plays the Sicilian now because if he plays the Sicilian I think I'm gonna play the wing gambit of course then you've got to double think will he be prepared for that because if he's looking at my games he will see that I'm playing that a lot and that might he might surprise me back so there's there's counter thinking but you know uh, as it's only an online match we're not gonna think like that um, but I do want to see if he's ever faced the King's Gambit so he's never faced the King's Gambit with f4 here which is quite intriguing um, he's probably again if he's done his research seen that I've played that but that's maybe what I'll do the Kings I'll, I'll gambit or move two against Vidit in both lines so okay so this is very interesting so now I've kind of used up this tree diagram to get a very good feeling of what Vidit plays in a, in a pretty much short time 12 minutes which is incredible um, so I'm thinking that if I want to it's very likely that if I go d4 uh, in the position that we're gonna get s with some move order we're gonna get this position bishop b4 which is the Rogozin. now this is an opening again I'm not so well accustomed to and I but I do obviously know some ideas uh, uh, of course about what to play if you don't know the ideas again this is where our encyclopedia uh, tab is and if you're registered you're a subscriber you can just click on the encyclopedia it will give you a rundown of, of this opening and you can have a look at the various very in-depth lines here again you can just load them one by one see which line you want uh, so there's many tools there's other tools but I'm not going to go into them you can even go to the YouTube video look at YouTube videos I'm not going to do that because I've played a lot of these games anyway don't need to but again a useful tool but if we go to um, uh, back to this position and we have a think about what I might play well again I will just stick with his games one more time and again I'm finding this incredibly useful I'm not just saying that but this is I'm finding useful that anything is out there to do a very quick bit of research on my opponent and, and you can see that he I mean one the two ideas I'm thinking of is either to go Queen C2 which might be a move that shocks him or to play some idea which I think Magnus Carlsen played against Geary which involved Bishop here h6 creating a hook moving the bishop back and then going g4 g5 so just want to have a look at this let's start with queen c2 because he's had this and now c5 and um, seems like a very typical break here and now let's just see how this game went a3 uh, bishop takes c3 pawn takes c3 knight c6 pawn e3 this looks very solid um i, I want something a bit more lively than this uh, I mean this is okay I've got two bishops I'm not worse here but uh, again someone as good as Vidit I think I want to try and surprise him and uh, if I'm getting a lot of equal positions uh, let's be honest he's a good player I should better I should better play all right but he's got more I want to I want to get something a bit more unbalanced than this so I'm already thinking this position look at it very symmetrical I don't really want that um, so I was hoping that after the move Queen C2 um, that he would play something like this because I very much like these structures where you get the center and sack a pawn here but he doesn't do that so that's kind of putting me off playing queen c2 so let's just see what he does against bishop g5 and he's had this move a number of times and he nearly always plays h6 and here there's a couple of moves but I'm sure that Magnus Carlsen played bishop d2 but as as um, 
how do I find that game? Well, now we flick off this, and you can do this at any moment if you can't memorize. I think you can do this by flicking off this, and it brings up all the top games here that have been played in this line. And let's just have a look. Uh, Mamajaros, a great guy. Uh, okay, he went bishop here, four, h4. Maybe I'm just making this up, yeah? Uh, did bishop d2, has it ever been played? Okay, we're going to get rid of it, its name, just so we don't confuse it. And uh, has this ever been played? Okay, I'm going to reset the board and just see. Maybe I'm just, I, I think I, we will be able to find this game. I'm going to refresh that one just so uh, we make sure. And I want to find this game. I'm pretty sure it's Magnus Carlsen versus Anish Giri. And it was some line where he played Bishop D2. Let's see if it comes up here. Magnus Carlsen, Ding Liron. Okay, Magnus Carlsen, Anish Giri. Could this be it? It is. Great. This is fantastic. So this is the game I could remember where... Magnus now played bishop d2 and his idea is that after castles he goes g4 great stuff uh, so this is much more my cup of tea and something that I, I would be interested in playing now of course um, Vidit will know this line especially as he's been seconding for a niche you probably know it very well but this 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 could be this could be interesting. We can always put on the computer to analyze this position if we want a little bit. And let's just see if we've got anything in the encyclopedia. We're adding to the encyclopedia all the time. You know, it's a massive task, so we're building that bit up. We can also look at online games in this position. There's been one YouTube videos. Well, Anish Giri has actually even looked at it. And I can see Vidit there. Maybe I should look at this, right? Maybe I should see. Let's just have a look. So we can go straight to this tab. Because obviously I see Vidit there, so we might even get Vidit's faults on this position. This could be interesting. So I'm just going to play this YouTube video and, and spy a little bit. <laughs> so we'll just bear with this video for a second or two. You go here G4, and you want to. It's like it's like uh, you want to go here so that he takes, and that makes you open the G file. So potentially you uh, basically provoke this H6 as a weakening. And after G4, yeah, it was difficult. Uh, uh, creation of hook, yeah. That's hook, how correct. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. Now, if I take the pawn, he puts the rook on the open file, and the problem is if I return, <laughs> he takes here. Oh. And uh, it's uh, the pawn is pinned, yeah. And then he starts the did attack he... on the open file. Well, Vidit doesn't. Did he play that be... move? Did he play g5, g4? Vidit doesn't seem to be paying much attention here, which is good. Mistake was uh, practical. Mistake was I, of course, don't have to castle. Yeah, I can do any other move, and I that was actually even what I planned. But I, okay. I sort of, I just sometimes you know castle is the most natural. I didn't even think. I thought yeah, probably castle, and I castled. But black can play differently here. You can develop this knight or uh, this pawn or this pawn or okay, not this pawn, but this pawn for example. Okay. Uh, main different moves, but yeah, castle g4. Now it was difficult. Uh, basically, okay, I tried to. Install the knight in the center, so the g5 is not happening. But he broke through anyway, I'll show you how. Here he did a great move, he sacrificed the spawn. I take and he goes here, opening further both the open files. Potentially king goes here, and after g4, knight g5. Again, if this takes, he has opened this. That was actually incredibly useful, <laughs> because uh, uh, we get a niche talking about this system. And um, just by doing the little search, we, we, we had a great hit there. What a result. So um, so the point he was making is that in this position, if black castles, that uh, he, he feels that white is doing absolutely fine. So we saw in that game, he tried to put the knight here, but Magnus just went queen c2. Let's just remember a couple of these moves here. And after c5, he took that one, opening the bishop. And now this g5 move. But if you remember what he was talking about in that video, he also mentioned that he thought castling was a mistake. So let's just see what other people have played. And we can load the PGN just to see what research we got here. And well, pawn c6 seems a very passive move to play. I wouldn't be worried about that. I'm more worried about some c5 move. But let's, let's just keep looking. 
if anyone's played this. Okay, so castles, okay, g4 was not played here, so we're not worried about that. Uh, we're just looking at the top games first. Castles, again, it wasn't played. What about this online game? Okay, so here, Grischuk, let's see what Grischuk did. So if you take there, okay, we should naturally think about this, c3, c5, bishop takes, pawn takes, now check, knight takes d4, and I'm just trying to remember this. If you ever want to save these lines, you could just go to the save button here and you can save the work, but I'm relying on my memory. But obviously you don't have a great memory, you just press this one and you save it to a folder. And you can create a new folder, so you can you can basically call the folder vidit, and you can save all of these lines so you build up a folder. And imagine the potential of doing that. Really, really massive. Um, but I'm not going to show that here because you know I do want to prepare for as much as, uh, as much as possible. And now this kind of position, bishop d7, queen a3, and I like that move. Two bishops, that's a nice advantage. Okay, great, great, great. So it doesn't seem like many people have played c5 here, right? which after after this not many people have played c5 uh, we can quickly have a look no there's another person who hasn't and online games no so i wonder what happens with c5 well um and again we've got some very low rated game there so this is where we would add this to the encyclopedia and again if there's any missing lines of course you want to do it but c5 looks very oh there is okay so there is an online game here great Let's just see and bring it up. Okay, very, very low rated players. I'm gonna put the computer on and it seems very natural in this position to play A3 and you leave the computer running for a bit and it will give you a bit of an assessment here. This isn't the strongest computer. We're working on bringing in, we've got a neural network um, deep analysis, which is gonna be the strongest out there and we're gonna add that in. But again, we are still developing the site, bear it in mind, very powerful site already, but uh, we've, we've got to bring some more tools in. But something like a3, I, I think I would play when he has to take here. I want to take the bishop. I want to open this one up. And this position looks looks okay for black, but in, in, in a game situation, I'm very tempted to give this a go. Um, and I'm not going to spend too much. Uh, you can see how much time you could spend analyzing this match. Um, it's only an online match. I just wanted to get some ideas. I'm not going to try to get a winning position from the opening, but I'm using G Chess to get uh, to prepare myself in a quite a. I want to do my preparation under an hour. I want to go and chill out today, and it's Sunday after all. So I could spend the whole day doing this and be really well prepared. But just imagine the potential you guys have got at home. You guys can do this, and prepare for opponents, prepare certain openings just by combining our tools at the top there. And we haven't even used all of our tools here. Uh, to do this but yeah I'm very very proud of it so I think what we're going to do now let, let's I think I'm happy with what I'm going to do with white now I do want to check what I'm going to do with black so I'm just going to do the same process again I did say I wasn't going to show you how to do this with both colors obviously you've got an idea of this preparing for an opponent here I haven't even used all the all the strengths of the system I haven't used the ginger GM DVDs but I made them, so I don't really, I, I memorized most of them anyway, so I don't need to show that to myself, uh, and lots of other things we're doing, but you know, uh, you guys can have a play around. But what does Fidit play as white? I haven't checked this out. So again, we put his name in, we search him. This time he has the white pieces. I'm gonna use the tree diagram again here, this this little tree thing. So we got Fidit here, just to see what he prefers. So he clearly prefers to play the move D4. But the way I play this position, very, very often, very, very often, it can go into French defense. So I just, because the move order I play is d4, e6. So you can go e4 going into a French. So I just want to see what he does against the French defense if um, this does occur. So we have now d4, d5, and he goes knight c3. And knight f6 is let's just see what he does against in the classical this is the main line of course I'll turn the computer off I, I don't need that at the moment uh, bishop b3 main line I don't play queen b6 but I think I, I think I'd be reasonably happy to get this position um, reasonably happy but one more look I want to do what does he do after bishop b4 and this is the old variation I played he goes here uh, b6 he goes queen g4 and I used to play this line this 
I don't like the look of this. We're not going to do that. A bit too passive. So we'll go c5 if we get this structure. And now after a3, of course, uh, I don't like, okay, bishop. So he hasn't had the main line. Maybe I'll give that a go. Maybe I'll give the winner where a go, just as a bit of a surprise. But it's much more likely that he's going to go d4 and move one. Uh, we'll reset the board because we'll have a look at a new one. We're going to bring in multiple PGN tabs here next, which will make this a lot easier. So you can have all these tabs that I've been working on. Instead of refreshing, you'll be able to save your work. Uh, so you'll have as many tabs as you want, separate PGNs here. And the strength of that is, you know, if you just want to save them, you you know, for, for another day, you want to go and have lunch or something, or you want to turn your computer off and you have it on your system, will be on your mobile. So you'll be able to look on your mobile with all your saved work and just flick through what you've done properly on the desktop. Uh, I think the desktop's a lot stronger to do proper work on than a mobile, but you can do this on a mobile. Um, you can just save all those PGNs or decide what you want to save. But let's have a look at his D4. Now, against F5, he has played knight c3 twice. Uh, I think I will go e6 here. I've got some other options I'm going to look at in a minute. Surprise. Against c4. Okay, well, I do play b6 here a fair few times. And I bet he goes bishop d3 after this move. Nearly everyone does. He does go bishop d3. Now, knight c6 is one move to play. I'm going to have a look at this in a minute. Um, knight e2. I played this a couple of times where you try to win the bishop, but I don't like the lack of space. Um, I know you have the two bishops here, but I just don't think the two bishops are that good here. I don't want to play this against him. You know, you can quickly tell what positions you like and don't like um, from from just browsing, especially when you know when I've been playing professionally a lot of years of my life, so I can sort of know when no, I don't like that. I don't like that. Let's move on. And. Um, he hasn't really faced the Dutch many times, so we haven't got a great, uh, great examples in the Dutch. Maybe through one f five and g three, we can see what he does. Let's have a look here. Let's see g six. Okay, so he's faced the Leningrad. Well, I could play the Leningrad, and he's gone b three. Okay, well that's interesting because I don't think this is a big test of the Leningrad. I don't think b b three is an okay move, but it's not a massive test. Maybe I'll play the Leningrad even. But then I have player five, move one, get ready for knight c3. Um, so, okay, so castles, bishop b2, pawn d6. And now knight e4 is a move that I've played. And now after this one, I think I recommend a5 here. I'm going to have a look at this because Ruland did a, a... Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. We're going to go here. And you can see here that the Leningrad Dutch, this is another tab we have not looked at yet. And if you own the Ginger GM course... I can literally see that this position has appeared in the Leningrad. So again, another very strong tool. We can load that PGN to the board, but actually, look at this. If you own, this is this is absolutely awesome. If you own the Ginger GM DVD, I can just sit back and watch the video. Me and Ruland, but it was a couple of years ago, so I've obviously forgotten it. My memory's crap. <laughs> you, you can, but this this is trying to make it easier without a memory. Uh, and I'm just going to sit back and what and watch this for a couple of minutes. I hope you don't mind. Obviously, this is just how I'm preparing for Vidit. And we're just going to sit back and just see what what's recommended here. So all you have to do with this is link your Ginger Jam courses to GHS. If you own the DVD, you can use this powerful thing. So let's, let's just have a, a think about this. And now we're going to take a look at when White doesn't play C4. So Knight BD2. And the first move is the same as in the other line. We're going to play Knight C6. But here, White has an extra option which which is kind of popular and I've, I've got it against me a few times I don't think I lost with it anyway so it's not <laughs> that dangerous I guess but um, it is something that that you need to know and that's the move knight e1 now before we move to knight e1 yeah. I think it's just uh, knight e1 is quite a half move for white to find if, if white plays anything else can we just demonstrate the standard plan again? Let's say he goes sure. A3. Like, let's just say A3, but rookie yeah. one, E3, anything. <laughs> sure. Now, everyone at home should know what you're doing here. They, so, they, actually, hopefully. This could be a quiz question, actually. Like, it should uh, be. What, what would you do in this position? Yeah, and this is a yeah. key thing for the Dutch. So you take, yeah. you take, and you play E5. That's it. Yeah. Done. Simple. Basically. Very simple. Just yeah, the other line uh, was, was yeah. demonstrated that enough, I guess. But yeah. you could... Uh, 
Okay, I mean, just to show you the potential that you can get this, but if you don't want to sit through the video, you've got the PGN of it here anyway. Uh, and just to save a bit of time, um, I, I'm just gonna have a look at the PGN. So knight c6 is the move. It looks like knight to e1 is the most challenging, uh, attacking this one. And what do we suggest now? So we have a number of moves, but d5 is the main move. And now, what do we play here? Well, I think I remember this line. This is where we should play a5. I quite like this position, actually. And now pawn to a4, and here f4. And this is a lot of fun, actually, with some very nice attacking chances here. Cool, cool, cool. That's good. I'm, I'm learning, actually, a lot here. Um, so I might play the Leningrad against uh, Vidit. That's that because he plays this line, uh, and I've just double-checked there. But the other thing that he has done, if you remember, if we go back to his games, is that on move one, he's also played knight c3. And my... Uh, I don't know this move so much. So if I try to go f5 on move one, then knight c3 is certainly something that he could do. And let's see. So I guess he's going to go bishop g5. And pawn d5 is, is correct. And he's played e3 and knight f3 here. Let's just have a look at e3. Okay, e6, knight to f3. And now a6 or bishop e7. I'm going to go back to the Leningrad Dutch, see what's recommended here. And again, I could just watch the video. If you own the video, you've got this here. But a6 is the move. Okay, with the idea of potentially coming to this square. And what did Vidit play on this? He played h3. Okay, we'll go back, see... Um, if this is uh, okay h3 is not recommended but oh it is there it is h3 okay but it only gives it as a sideline okay now um, what other ideas here we're going c5 generally okay nice that's our general idea and if bishop e bishop e2 we're going c5 we're going c5 and this is where Rulon came up very interesting idea of taking on d4, I can remember this slightly, and playing bishop d6, and now here, knight e2, knight c6, and in this position, queen, knight to e4, I think was an interesting possibility, uh, and this position seems fine for black, because my great knight in the center. Okay, so knight c3, doesn't look too worrying this, does it? And let's just see how Vidit played it in, in his game. So just to see if there's anything after a6, h3. So bishop e7, bishop d3. So I could play c5 here, maybe, no? Is this in the encyclopedia? No, we, we are obviously working on encyclopedia. We'll have to add these things in. We haven't got that section yet. Let's just see how he played it. So bishop here, who did he play? I could flick this. I was against David Anton, so a very strong player. Let's just load that PG in in and Knight c6. I prefer this move c5. I don't understand knight c6. a3, knight e2, knight e4. And yeah, I mean, probably, probably, yeah, I don't like this g5. This doesn't seem right. This is, uh, okay, so let's just see after h3 if this has occurred in any other top game. So we're just going to get rid of it and see what other games are uh, being prepared in this maybe we need to just refresh um, we have to double check how that works for future and um, so oh I did that wrong but I can remember the position so I want to flip the board I want to look at it from the black point of view and it's also good to play the moves to remind myself what's happening so that was here 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 h3 right so um, is this the position nope okay so why is that not happening here? Let's try one more time. Maybe I need to reset the board. This is something we need to make sure works properly, of course. And let's have a look. I'll put it in the encyclopedia. Okay, we've got one bit Dutch there. Now, knight to f3, and it was a6 here. Uh, knight c3, I did include that. Top games, okay, is this gonna do it? Good. Well, Fabiano, uh, is always a good person to look at. Uh, okay, but that's actually not with h3. So we're going to put one more move on the board, h3. And top games, these two players are very strong. Let's see what happened here. 
bishop b7, bishop d3, castles, knight e2. I think you have to play c5, right? Takes knight c6. And this kind of position looks fairly okay, right? Okay, this doesn't scare me at all. All right, good. Well, I'm getting an idea about what's played. The last thing I want to look at as maybe as a wild possibility, just to, you know, the Dutch I play all the time, and we'll just put it back on Vidit just to see what he's got, is, well, I do also play the Kings in defense. So I'm just gonna very quickly look at what he does in the Kings in defense. Um, we go bishop g7, e4, d6. So he plays the same-ish quite a lot. Interesting, castles, bishop e3. And let's have a look at this line. Okay, I could, oh, there's a lot to learn now. I can't be bothered to learn that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to refresh myself on lines there. If I was playing in an overboard serious competition, I might consider that, but uh, just getting a look at ideas. And the other thing I wanted to check out is after d5, okay, you always play c5. So no one has played the Albion counter gambit against him. Just as some crazy gambit line to play. Okay, but it's a pity he hasn't had any games in that because I can't see what he does there. Um, other opening choices I could play. Well, the, la the other thing was, of course, I just, we do remember that he plays bishop to d3 in this position. I don't think there's been any uh, any latest developments here. We might, we might need to reset the board here, refresh it. Uh, Got to make sure that we fix that a little bit. But let's just have a look one more time at this bishop d3 and um, Oh, that's not the English, so. Okay, I'll have to check out why this is not refreshing. It's a little bit annoying because you don't want to refresh the page every time, do you? And we have reset the board. Let's try one more time, see if this works, okay. And do remember that obviously what we made here, we think is fantastic, but it's an ongoing thing and it's only gonna get better and better. And just little things like that we, we will get on top of. And Bishop D3, so. Uh, the, oh, it's under the English opening. Okay, interesting. And okay, well, it actually is coming up only with Vidit's games here anyway, which is peculiar. Um, Hikaru, what does Hikaru play? Yes, yeah, so this is this is a this is a very interesting line. This one here, but I I I've always thought that White's probably a lot better here. Have we got anything on this? I doubt it. Oh, we have got something on this top games not many top games there any youtube videos well one of mine <laughs> okay let's just see how hikaru played this one so um now c5 is a key move and this is all quite all a theory here bishop e7 yeah so this is this is this is a gambit line i'm not too i mean i, I know that it's very good theoretically i'm not convinced that that's that's something I want to do, to be honest. Um, you know, Hikaru lost his white here. Interesting. Uh, let's just have a look. Uh, okay. Well, nothing that exciting there. I'm just getting ideas if I want to mix it up during the course of the tournament. And what else could be played? I think there's another line where you go check. And they go king f1. This is this is maybe something which and you can see we got this is where a lot of the lines if you can see if it comes up and we're, we're gonna be adding this to all lines we spent a lot of money and you can see uh, what this is here when the thing pops up we spent a lot of money with this stockfish which we went through every position a lot of positions we could find uh, we're gonna go through all positions and it spent five minutes on each position given a deep deep analysis one of the highest levels you won't get this analysis anywhere else and it will give you as you can see a variation and an assessment what it thinks so it thinks white's better here someone being loud outside so what about here i think this was a move aha well it's a move yeah it's a move look <laughs> i've i've lost nearly every game in it okay <laughs> doesn't look like a very good move then and we are lacking a little bit of stuff here. So uh, let me just shut the window. So you can see there, that's a rough idea of how you can use um, G-Chess to prepare for your opponent. 
and to improve your openings. Now, just to please do bear in mind, you know, we're adding this all the time. We've got many, we've got many great things coming uh, next. Um, we're gonna have to improve the encyclopedia. This is building out by people all the time. We've only got grandmasters working on this and we wanna have every position uh, fixed. So you've got an analysis, grandmaster analysis for every position. Um, so that's certainly something we wanna do. Um, the top games, we're gonna add more games to this all the time. So everything's gonna get bigger and better, but I hope you at least get an idea about how you can um, prepare for an opponent. Now this is one position, I'm just thinking here, I mean the computer's not gonna like it. It gives it as a plus one advantage. I don't think I can risk this much against Vidit. This this, this is a weird little gambit line. Uh, all right, well, there we go. Thank you just for watching this. I think uh, it was just a quick idea how I'm now using GHS myself um, rather than other programs to, to understand about how to prepare for certain players and improve my openings. And as I say, it's only gonna get bigger, it's only gonna get better, and you won't find anything else online which combines all these strong assets. The Ginger Gem courses, when you have a position on it, the encyclopedia, the top games, online games, and of course YouTube, which we saw was very useful there for me preparing or getting ideas for that YouTube game. So uh, uh, it's a very solid start, and get on the G-Chess train by subscribing. Cheers.